and welcome to another episode of Ubar. One of the things you ask me the most is how I can test locally, how I can debug locally, and I always tell you, don't do it. <laughs> So in today's video, I want to show you a new tool that uh, will help you to test in the cloud faster, better, and like if you were doing it locally. So let's talk about Sam Accelerate. So Sam Accelerate is a new feature from AWS Sam. So, you know, I've been using Sam now for a couple of years and I really, really like it. And Accelerate, it's part of the, um, the latest version. It's in preview now, so it's, um, it can have some changes that can break in the future. So this is what it is today, but maybe in six months it works a little different. But you can use it. If you install the latest version of um, Sum, you will get the Sum Accelerate in there and you can try whatever I'm going to show you. So the idea of Samba Accelerate is to create a faster feedback loop between you, your code, and the cloud. Because before, well, whenever you want to deploy something, do some deploy, it takes a while because it goes to CloudFormation, it builds the infrastructure, and blah, blah, blah. So what we want to do with Samba Accelerate is to that if you are changing code, uh, then you can just go to the cloud and it's a faster change, it's a simpler change. So you can do this kind of faster iteration when you are developing something and you want to try it right away. So Sam Accelerate uh, has a couple of new features. The first one is um, the ability of build without the dependencies. So if your dependencies have not changed, you can run some build uh, with some parameters I will show you in a moment, and it will build uh, faster because now it's not building your dependencies. Then you have a new feature called some sync, and that allows you to have your uh, watch open. So if you, you will have like, I don't know, a React app uh, loaded and you do changes and it kind of work, <laughs> but this will be in the cloud. And this is special because because not everything can work with some sync. So basically, if you do some sync the first time uh, you do it, it will deploy your application normally, like if you will do some deploy, but then uh, it will be on and you will leave it there. And whenever you change code, it will just change the code, update the code and not touch the cloud formation. That makes it extremely faster. And when I talk about code, I talk about four things. The first one is Lambda code itself. So whenever you change the code within the Lambda, unless you are embedding in, in the infrastructure, don't do that. If you put it in a file outside of the infrastructure, then whenever you change that, it will automatically update. Then Lambda layers. So whenever you are changing the code within a Lambda layer, it will do the same. Then the code uh, inside the state machine. So the state machine definition, again, don't put it inside the, the infrastructure definition, put it in a separate file. And this is the Amazon state language that defines the state machine. Um, again, if you change it now, it will change faster. You don't need to redeploy everything. And this is really handy because you can do unit tests for your Lambda code, but doing unit tests for state, <laughs> state machines is hard. I don't know if you can do that. So sometimes you need to deploy like 20 million times to make sure that things are working. And if you don't change the infrastructure, just the, um, the state machine, this is super fast. And also open API uh, for the Amazon uh, API gateway, if you use that for defining your API gateway and you have it in outside file in a separate file from your infrastructure, whenever you change that, that will update automatically. And this is also cool because sometimes you spend a while doing that open API file and you might need to deploy many times and it gets quite tedious. So if you are doing changes in these four different places, then when you have some sync enabled, the changes will just change and you can basically imagine that you're locally and it's super fast you don't need to wait basically you save that file some uh, take that uh, save and put it in the cloud without you doing anything so that's cool the next thing that they have added in this some accelerate library is the capability of not only seeing the logs tailing the logs and also seeing the X-ray insights. And I think that's pretty cool because, well, 
I never use SAM for the logs. I like to use my serverless console to see the logs. I think those are really great and they, they are nice visualizations. But sometimes you want to see your X-ray, uh, whatever is happening in X-ray, and then you need to log into your AWS account and click and click and click and wait and wait and click. And you don't want that. If you want to get your insights directly while you're developing, then uh, there is a new command that does it. And you can have it open, so when you are developing, you can basically push fast and then see if your code is still working well. So I want to show you everything because it's the easiest way. So let's go to my computer and see what is going on. So here I have a super simple uh, SAM application. It's as two Lambda functions. I think I have shown you this example many times. One that uh, saves something into a database, another one that gets something from a database. Basically, it's a greeter. You put uh, a name, and if you have hello it before, greet it before, then it will tell you this person was great on the date. And if it's not, it will tell you nobody was greeted with that name. And when you do the post, operation, then it will basically save that into the database. So we have a table, we have a couple of Lambda functions, and we have one API with the post and the get. And then if we go to the Lambda handler, it's very similar. We have um, uh, two different methods, one for the save, one for the get, and a couple of operations for Dynamo. Uh, very straightforward. I think I have shown you this many times. I will leave you the link for the code in the description box so you can explore it. But the code is not important in here. I just wanted to have something simple so I can show you how some Accelerate works. So after we do this, then what we can do is um, deploy this application. Uh, so let's run first to verify that you have the latest version of SAM. I think you need to have 1.34 or over. I have 135 and this works. So if you have over that, then you're good to go. And then you can do some uh, build and we can try to build it. Uh, if you add the dash dash cache, then you're using this new functionality that only builds uh, with like if it needs to build the dependencies. I have not done anything in the dependencies. So basically it just built without the dependencies, but imagine that I added something in the dependencies, then it will build the dependencies. Uh, I just do some change in the code and then I run again the some build cache and you will see that there is no, um, no need to build the dependencies. So that's good. That's very, very fast. Uh, so that's something that in accelerates your some usage. <laughs> But for me, this is not the coolest of SAM. I really, really into the SAM sync. For me, this is like what got me into, into this new, this new release of, of SAM. And I'm super excited about it because I have to be honest, I don't write that many unit tests nowadays. I did it a lot when I was working in a company, but now that I'm doing a lot of demos, I sometimes get lazy. So I tend to test my code in the cloud. <laughs> and doing some deploy and waiting makes me watch a lot of in stories in Instagram while I'm doing that. So this will speed up my productivity a lot and make all the influencers I follow to have less views. So some sync and then you put the name um, of the stack. So in this case, we have not deployed yet the stack, so I will just name this stack. And then if you do dash dash watch, that means that the SAM sync will stay on and whatever changes you're doing, it will get pushed into the cloud. So this is great. The first time it will do the deployment into the cloud. So it will tell you first that this is a better thing. Are you sure you're okay with this? And yes, it's good. So it will explain you a little bit of what is going on, but I already told you about that. So we proceed, we accept that this is a beta feature and then it will start the deployment. The deployment is the same as we are used to. So I will speed this up until the deployment is done because we don't want to wait for it. So now you can see that the, uh, you will get the output, so like the URL, like the CloudFormation output, that's good that we want it. And then also the infra sync completed. So our first deployment was done. Now our infrastructure is completed. Now, if we change the infrastructure, then it will need to redeploy because, well, 
uh, infrastructure changes are not, uh, you have to go through CloudFormation. So that's it. But if we change the code, then CloudFormation skip and it just happens and update directly into the code. And again, what I mean by the code, Lambda, Lambda layers, state, uh, state machines, and open API for API Gateway. Those are the things that are considered code. So what I'm going to do now is to go to the code and change something. And then we can see what happens in uh, the terminal. I need to leave the terminal kind of open so you can see it. Um, and this will be running in the background for, for me. So let's leave it there and let's open, I don't know, some... Uh, first, let's do a query. I use the Thunder client and create a new request. And because I have this so much zoom, I need to <laughs> move things all around so you can see it. Uh, but bear with me. Uh, but basically, I'm just um, getting that output. And then I'm, I'm calling the endpoint basically on the get with some names. So this is a brand new environment. So it will tell me that nobody was created with that. So we can see that uh, the output is it's like that. So if I go to Handler and I change that output, you will see that it changed automatically. So let's go and, um, and find that output. Tiki tiki, it's in the um, in the get hello. At the end, you will see that when there is an error in the database, we can put um, a sad face or something like that. Then we save, and as, as soon as we save, then the Lambda functions start syncing, and it basically finishes syncing the code, and it gets in this loop that it starts syncing Automatically, I think this is a better thing, so we need to bear with the errors. Uh, but, but it will never stop syncing. But if you keep on doing changes, it keeps on syncing. So for us, it's good. I don't know if this is the, <laughs> the way that this should work, but great. So if we go again to the Thunder client and we do the exact same request, then we should see that uh, sad face right away. It, it just went to the cloud. So that's what we like. We want to have that type of fast development and, and fast deployment into the cloud so we can test on the cloud. <laughs> so now I will stop this and I want to show you one more thing. So let's look at the logs. So if I do some logs and the stack name and that's just tail, the logs appear there and you can see that there is quite a lot of information. Again, I like to use the serverless uh, console for this, for seeing the logs, but now they're here and they are tailing. So whenever uh, something happens, then this will appear. And the interesting thing here is that it's all the logs from the stack. So it's not only one Lambda function, it's just everything is the API gateway logs, is this lambdas logs, is the state machine logs, so whatever you are getting there, you are seeing logs. So that's good. So then if we uh, do the last thing I want to show you is the include uh, insights, and that means to see the X-ray login, and that I think becomes very powerful. I have X-ray enabled. If you don't know what X-ray is, I have a video about that linked in the description box, so you can go and check it out. But basically this uh, allows you to see all the information from X-ray and the logs. So now you get the full picture. And I think this is very powerful because it really, saves you time to go to the console. I don't like to go to the console. I like to do everything from my Visual Studio Code. For me, it's very productive not to leave that and stay there as much as possible. So if I can see the X-ray insights, that helps a lot. And I can see if there is any error or any bottleneck or whatever in there. So, and also I can see the response times and whatever. So that's something I will explore a little bit more, what happens when you put segments and sub segment. I don't know how this looks, but this is something if you're interested in me exploring, let me know and I can make a video about it. If not, I will do the exploration on my own. <laughs> so now, Every time you want to develop, just start some sync and then let it be in the background uh, with the watch. So you can basically do the changes. They will go to the cloud automatically. And then you can have the logs with the insights as well open. So you have these two terminals always running in your Visual Studio Code or whatever ID you like. And when you are developing, you can basically see what everything is happening all the time. No need to jump anywhere else and no need to wait for anything. So this is extremely fast um, and this is one of my favorite things because I believe that developers should have a lot of productivity and make it like 
as fast as you can. Uh, and, and I think this is a very interesting tool, the possibility to sync to the cloud extremely fast. So you don't need to test locally. That was all I have for you today. I hope you like this type of videos. Let me know in the comment box below. Give it a like and I see you next week with another episode of Fubak. Ciao, ciao!